Wolfden made a video saying that you should buy the Anbenic RG405M rather than the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. I disagree. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna to explain to you why Wolfden was wrong and why you should consider the Retro Pocket 3 Plus metal version. The Anbenic build on the RG405M is nice, but it's got the dreaded oversharpening, the text and stuff is over sharpened. On the Android side, you can't change it without using third-party software like Gamma OS. And the fact that there is third-party software for this and not the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is indication enough to tell you that the Android build on this is not quite up to scratch. I mean, I don't hate it. The interface is quite nice. It's got some nice little features in the drop-down menu, but overall, the Android is not quite there. You know, Retroid has things like specific handheld settings in the settings menu. You can go back to factory settings. You can restart the setup wizard if you broke something and wanna reinstall it. And those are little tweaks that make it just more unified and more like a handheld. Both front ends on this are not great. I would highly recommend you just shift to Digest Show the second that you get this. But we're gonna talk about something to do with the front end later on in the video that does give the Anbenic admittedly a bit of an edge on the Retroid. You know, we've got a 640 by 480 screen on here, four by three aspect ratio, which makes it unique. And the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus has a 1330 by 750. So it's a higher resolution screen and it does show when you play games. And it is strange that they went this route on such an expensive device. Maybe they spent all their money on the metal, you know, maybe they reduced the screen resolution for performance sake, but, Overall, for such an expensive device to have such a low resolution screen just doesn't work for me, you know, pros and cons. And then it doesn't have HDMI out. So this has, like it or lump it, it's got a micro HDMI output, which is okay. This doesn't have it at all. I know the Gamma Squeeze, the guy that made Gamma OS managed to, and I'll put the link to how he did it in, in a written note for this video, but he managed to get HDMI out via the USB with a specific USB dongle, so that's possible, but it's not ideal. And then the dreaded Anbenic issue. <laughs> that's a massive difference. And for such an expensive device, you know, in terms of quality of life and recommending to this to someone saying, cool, spend over $200 on a device and then it arrives from China, they get it, and the first thing they hear is this. That's just unacceptable. And then the other little quirk is clicky function buttons. Not the end of the world, but it just doesn't feel professional. And the shoulder buttons as well. Just very cheap sounding for this price point. So both of these devices have sacrificed some ergonomics, some like handling capabilities for the sake of pocketability. And I do feel like Anbenic sacrificed a little bit too much. I mean, they did shave off a, a huge, like two centimeters off the length of the device, but when you hold this, it feels good in the hand, but just try to play some PS2 or GameCube, which is what people are gonna try to do with this device. You can tell me that it's not built for that or whatever. Actually, the four by three screen makes it perfect for PS2. And so you're gonna try play God of War, whatever on here. And I played through, well, almost played through PS2 God of War. And uh, these L2 and R2 buttons are just not, <laughs> They're really cramped. If you, if you hold it like this, which is what I did, um, it, it becomes quite difficult. I've got no problem with the L1 and R1 buttons. They're great, because you can just press them like that. But these just, ugh. And then let's just look at some sort of interesting comparisons. We've got the aesthetics, and actually, you know, the Retro Pocket 3 Plus Metal version, in the renders, and when I saw it online, and then I saw photos of it in real life, it just didn't appeal to me. I'm not a fan of two-tone devices or just two-tone anything, and uh, I just didn't like it. But in person, I said this on a, a, a post on my YouTube channel, is it feels iconic and it feels like a collectible device. It just looks like something special. You know, when you look at the 3DS and you think, oh, what an iconic device. This is kind of how this feels. It just feels like something that we are going to remember. That being said, this gray, which is actually a sort of green on the RG405M, is 
beautiful. It's a really lovely color. It also just has the special look about it. Um, and the, the, you know, the fact that Anbenik did go for this compact candy bar shape um, and the, the, the sort of sharp, not sharp edges, but flat edges, it, it is really pretty. I don't think I would say one is nicer than the other. I think they both are really good looking devices. I'll put the weights on the screen now between these two. Um, I don't have <laughs> the weight yet, but you know, I have found that the Retro Pocket 3 Plus does feel a little bit heavy to me. This didn't, I never felt like it was too heavy. So in terms of brightness, let's quickly just, so to my eye, the Retro Pocket 3 Plus does look brighter, which is nice for your outdoor situations. But then if we go to the dimmest setting, so this is where I played the, the Anbenik in bed and, and the Anbenik is definitely dimmer. So that actually is quite a big plus for the RG 405M. If you are a nighttime player, um, it is a lot dimmer um, in low light settings, which, which I like personally, because I often will just play a few games at night and it is a nice benefit to have a dimmer screen. But then in brighter situations, the Retro Pocket 3 Plus is definitely gonna be the winner. Although, so I know I'm busy trying to convince you that Wolf Den was wrong, but in practice, because these speakers are here and the speakers on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus are there, like slightly towards the back, when you're using the device, the audio feels better on the Anbenik. And then a quick little note about buttons. So what I will say is that Anbenik have knocked it out of the park, not so much on the shoulder buttons and the function buttons, but in terms of these Joy-Cons feel better than the Joy-Cons or the joysticks on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. I've, these are the hall sensors in here. Um, and I, 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 I thought about this. These are more floppy. There's less resistance to the sensor, whereas the Retro ones, there's more of a, a snap to the middle, which, you know, I was playing the Samus Returns, Metroid Samus Returns, and you need to direct the laser um, pointer for the gun at certain points to shoot things. And I found this fine, like it worked well um, compared to my X28, which is my favorite device, uh, which is terrible. Um, and then this is just slightly better. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a win on there. The D-pad on here is more of a retro D-pad. It's got a nice firm rubber membrane that feels excellent. And the button is a matte finish, which I really like. Um, the Retro Pocket 3 Plus is an acquired taste. It's more of a PS Vita, PlayStation Portable style with the dome switches behind it, which I've actually gotten used to. So when I pick this up, I just get a happy feeling because it's my special Retro Pocket 3 Plus. So, you know, pros and cons. And then the, the these skittle buttons that people love to hate, I actually quite enjoy them on here. Um, and they're larger and they've got a really nice feeling when you press them. Someone was talking to me recently and said, oh, are you getting the scratching on the side? And I am getting the scratching on the side of the buttons. Doesn't bug me that but much, it bugs some people. Whereas uh, these Retro Pocket 3 Plus buttons are, are near flawless, but they are a bit smaller. Um, in terms of feeling, I prefer the Anbenek buttons. So I'm really not helping my case here against Wolf Den. And then the button layout is worth mentioning because someone on YouTube said I must mention it. So I'm mentioning the button layout. Streaming, I tested some streaming on these two devices and they both suck. <laughs> 
The Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is usable. I don't have the best setup. My laptop is supposed to be a gaming laptop, but the Wi-Fi chip is useless. And so I did a bit of streaming on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus in the past. I tried it again today. It works. Streaming on these devices isn't going to be fantastic, but the Retro Pocket 3 Plus definitely has the edge. Battery life, I got just over six hours playing PS2 and some Game Boy Advance non-stop on the Anbenic. I unfortunately haven't done a battery test on here. I will say that the battery life feels better on here because the standby mode is better on here. I did a bit of digging online. I did a Reddit search and I found that you can, and I'll put it on my notes my, my, on my website, um, how to fix the standby mode on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, which was a revelation to me. I'm actually gonna implement that now when I'm finished with the video. And then the one thing that the Anbenic does better and may push you over the edge. So you might be watching this and going, this guy actually has a point. <laughs> and you might listen to this next point and go, actually, this is the device for me. And so I start by saying the fact that these manufacturers ship these devices. So Retro don't do it. They don't ship the device with games. Anbernic do. I've got a 128 gigabyte card with this device. I've backed it up onto my laptop because those cards are really poor quality, but uh, I got a card with it. It had 128 gigs of games and it was all synced up. Um, Ambernic have a little setup guide. You follow those steps. You need to decompress the RetroArch files and there's a few little things you need to do. But once you've done that and you switch on, you swipe down, you switch on from normal to game mode, your game turns into a console. So it uses the front end launcher and just becomes a console. That's how it works and then it all just works seamlessly. And that is really a huge plus for a lot of people. I get a lot of people on YouTube saying, do I have to do all this nonsense? Can't I just play the games? And while it is dodgy because you are just playing games that were given to you by Anbernic, it is there and it works and it works really well, really well. The front end, they've got images loaded for box arts, but if you don't have your the images, you have, have like I've mentioned, you've got to download box arts on your laptop and then load it onto the card and then put it on. But apart from that, it just works seamlessly. There were a few emulators, so PSPP, SSPP, I didn't like the way it pushed it to full screen and it wasn't flowing nicely with Digest Show. So, so I switched out PPS, PP, SSPP with the gold version, the paid version, that worked nicely for me. And then the Ether SX for PS2, I just downloaded the last usable version from their Discord and put that on there just for, for safekeeping. And so that in a nutshell is the thing that might push you over the edge for the RG405M, but wait, there's more. <laughs> so the Anbernic also has better performance, very slightly, and I think it has to do with the lower resolution screen. The graphics on the chip doesn't have to push out as much processing for this lower resolution screen, so it does have the edge on performance kind of here and there, but it's not a big deal so much that I would say, you know, buy this because it performs better. But that being said, if you put Gamma OS on you and you'd get the lean version, the one without the Play Store, you'll get even better performance. And then you definitely will get better performance in the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. So finally, am I just being a clickbaity asshole? <laughs> and I probably am, but no, I, I, I really still feel after all that, and even after saying that the unified system on the Anbenic is better for newcomers, Digest Show is so much better that I highly recommend after a while just using your own games firstly and secondly just using Digest Show because it is such a nice system. So the RG405M versus the Retro Pocket 3 Plus has a few things up its sleeve. I've written here, I've thought about it. Slightly better performance, an easy setup for beginners, excellent action buttons and D-pad. However, we have those clicky shaky shoulder buttons and the over sharpening on the screen, which are just unacceptable. At this price point, that is unacceptable. And then we have sort of the non deal breaker factors like there's no HDMI outputs, uh, the clicky function buttons, which is not a big deal, and the overall cramped ergonomics to take into account, which I mean, you know, holding it and cramped, that's something that you need to decide, is it a deal breaker for you? So. At the end of the day, you're spending over, with shipping included, $200 on these devices. 
And so with that in mind, firstly, you need to note that you're heading into AYN Odin light territory, which is a lovely special device and moving out of the sort of fun loving retro gaming arena and into a proper gaming console arena. And then secondly, I do feel because of that, I need to be more critical as a reviewer and I'm just not feeling the RG405M. It's still feeling like a fun loving retro gaming console with a metal case. That's my opinion. And the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, however, the only downside of this device, literally the only downside, it's still pocketable, the buttons are great, feels good in the hand, it's solid, it's got a good Android build. The only downside is the fact that it takes long to set up. And so when you're spending $200, I think a long setup time is the least of your problems because you're going to do it once and your device is going to be lovely to use for the rest of its lifespan. And there are great setup guides by myself, Joey's Retro Gaming, um, Retro Game Call. There are setup guides for Android and you just follow them. It takes you some time and it's done and then it's spectacular. So am I being a clickbaity asshole? No, I disagree with Wolf Den. I think that you should get the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Will you hate the Anbenic RG405M? No, 